Yasmin Warsame, once called the next Iman by fashion designer Michael Kors, never sought out to walk on some of the most coveted runways in the world and gracing fashion campaigns for luxury fashion houses and household names alike. It's doubtful that the thought ever crossed her mind as a little girl in Somalia, a country with one of the lowest life expectancies in the world due to years of civil strife. The little girl from Somalia would become one of the most successful Canadian models in history. Warsame, born in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia, was the youngest of her father's 21 children. Born into a traditional Muslim polygamist family, her father had three wives, one of which was Yasmin's mother, Dahabo. Warsame was raised by older siblings after her father died when she was just five years old. By the time she was nine years of age, she had lived in Kenya, Zambia, and London, England. She was often in the care of her older sister while her mother stayed behind in Somalia. And in England, she found herself feeling ostracized, not feeling like she belonged in British society, recalling a time when she once said, quote, as far as the British are concerned, to be British, you have to look British, end quote. Already having a few other siblings living in Canada and liking what she had heard and read about the multicultural country that Canada was, Warsame decided to make the life-changing decision to move to Canada at the age of 15. That would change her life. She experienced attending high school in Canada, and after graduating, she decided to pursue a career and enrolled in Seneca College to study psychology and social sciences while working at a medical center. When she turned 19, she became a young bride, and when the marriage ended, four years later, she was pregnant in fact, by the time she was discovered by a modeling scout at the age of 22, she was at the age when most models were hanging up their high heels and retiring. It was a fateful day when she was out with friends. She was stopped on the streets of Toronto in the summer of 97 and approached to model. It wasn't the first time she was approached. And many times earlier, she dismissed the previous opportunities due to her Muslim faith she'd been concerned with having the stigma that comes with modeling. However, by the time she was approached again in 97 and the scout said, give me just half an hour of your time and you won't regret it, she decided to take the plunge. At her first official modeling gig at a hair show, Varsame was already five months pregnant. Then, after giving birth to her son, she was doing catalog work for Sears. Warsame's rise to the top of the modeling food chain was a gradual one. Ultimately, it was her innate elegance, regality, high cheekbones, long neck, in addition to her timeless look that caught the attention of major agencies who were eager to book her for shows in Europe. She was seen as the right fit for high fashion clients. When she landed in Paris in 2002, she was already put in a course to be in front of the best of the best. Her first go sees were at Gucci when Tom Ford was at the helm and the next day she was meeting with Karl Lagerfeld for a Chanel runway show casting. Tom Ford and Karl Lagerfeld took to her so well they both hired her on the spot. Before she knew it, she was doing editorials for the likes of Steven Meisel, Mario Testino, and other major photogs for the pages of all the major Vogue magazines. France, Italian, American, you name it, Varsami was being photographed to be in the pages of every major Vogue. Two years into her high fashion career as a model, fashion magazine had taken notice and gave her the award of most alluring model in 2004. But she was just getting warmed up. Barsami had scored major campaigns for MAC, L'Oreal, H&M, Banana Republic, The Gap, Jones New York, Chanel Allure Fragrance, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and has walked the runways of Chanel, Dolce & Gabbana, McQueen, Valentino, 
Gucci, Christian Dior, Hermes, D Squared, Givenchy, just to name a few. She was also one of the models featured in the now iconic black issue of Vogue Italia, creative directed by the late Franca Sozzani. Off duty, Warsame still practices her Muslim faith and is often wearing a hijab when she isn't on the clock. Warsame is also heavily involved in volunteer work, bringing awareness to the issues affecting African youth, especially those from her native country of Somalia. She's recalled numerous times she's been met with ignorance when people find out about her Somalian heritage. Quote, people always say, oh, are you a pirate? When I tell them I'm from Somalia, but I tell them that there's far more to the country than that one problem. Not all of it is divided by war. For example, where my mom lives, all the tribes live peacefully together. End quote. She's often committing her time and efforts to helping organizations that she's connected to, raising funds for various causes that are linked to Africa, locally, in her hometown of Toronto, and internationally. Saying, quote, We have to get the word out as much as we can that Africa needs our help. I've got a passion for Africa, not only because that's where I am from, but because it's a place that's suffering, and my heart goes out to any place where there's misery, end quote. Some of her efforts included raising money to feed 1,400 internationally displaced people at refugee camps during Ramadan. Her humanitarian work even had Bob Geldof and Bono take notice. Warsame is also very passionate about bringing attention to homegrown Canadian talent by wearing Canadian designers as often as she can. She really believes in the talent coming out of Canada, saying, By wearing the work of Canadian designers, I am showcasing them, and in my way, giving thanks for a journey in fashion that continues to be incredible. Nowadays, at the age of 46, Warsame is still in demand, walking the runways of Milan and Paris and the like. She's been a judge on Canada's Next Top Model. She's already nabbed a lead role in a film, The Grave Digger's Wife, which screened at the Toronto International Film Festival. Warsame once commented in maintaining her authentic African traditions while also being a jet-setting, in-demand high fashion model. I'm a multicultural woman. I can go home and eat with my hands, and I can come back and do my modeling. It's wonderful.